Rose fragrances get a bad rap. Word on the curb is that they're outdated, nobody wants them, and they make you smell, well, old lies. Like most florals, rose comes on a spectrum from older, mustier, and a little bit Victorian to something soft, sweet, and barely a rose at all. You can barely tell. And in today's video, I'm going to share some fragrances, some rose fragrances that are on the softer side of things. They're still rose, and they have a bit of a personality, and we want that, but they aren't overpowering old fashioned or carry any of the bad stigmas from the 80s so in today's video we're going to get into some of my favorite rose fragrances that i would recommend to somebody just starting out with rose fragrances because i like a lot of people don't like the old-fashioned shit but i do have my fair share and so i'm going to share those with you because you might find a gem here let's get into it Hi, I'm Janique, and this video is inspired by my little sister. I sent her a bunch of fragrances. See my short about it. I sent her a bunch of fragrances, and one of the ones she picked out as a loving, shockingly, was Chloe Eau de Parfum, a very classic rose fragrance. I would have sworn she would have told me, mm, it's not my style, like she has been doing with most of the fragrances I sent her that I thought would be gems. But with this one, she loved it. And I thought, Maybe there are people out here who also love Armani My Way and who think they just love warm florals and hate rose who might be into them if they found the right one. Now, let's start off. Mm, let's start off and say Chloe Eau de Parfum didn't make the cut for this video. Not really because it is not a soft rose fragrance. It is a classic rose. So it doesn't go to the other end of the spectrum and is terrible. Here was a strong word. It doesn't go to the other end of the spectrum and is really old school. It sits somewhere in the middle. So we aren't quite at the middle for this video. We're way at the end in the beginner stage of the pool. And we'll get into some of the ones that I love. Some gourmand, some fruity ones, some smoky ones. And maybe there's something here you would like. Now, if you haven't known so already, like the video, subscribe to me. And anybody who's done so already, thank you. You're awesome. You're amazing. And I love you. Now let's get started. Starting off strong like we end off strong, so stick around until the end of the video, that's what I'm saying when I say that, is Montal's Intense Cafe. Look at this guy, it's cute. Now this is a gourmandy rose. So it's rose, but not really. It's not rose floral. It's not a floral for it fragrance. It's mostly gourmand. It is supposed to be vanilla, coffee, and rose. There's barely any coffee in here. There's barely any coffee. There's a toops maybe of blonde roast, but it's mostly, for me anyway, a sort of almond milky, vanilla, and rose fragrance. There is a more intensely coffee version of this called Ristretto Intense Cafe. So if you want more coffee, go there. But that one doesn't have nearly as much rose, so we're sticking to this one for today. And this one, like I said, smells like an almond milk latte with a little bit of blonde rose. It's barely a coffee smell there. The rose smells like rose water that you'd add to like a creamy, milky, vanilla-y drink. It's very pretty. It's very fall appropriate. It's nighttime appropriate. It's wonderful if you want to like try on rose, but and you love gourmands and you want to explore rose a little bit more, this is a great way to do so. It's an easy way to do so. But if you don't got Montal money, because these niche houses be charging an arm and a leg. Zara has a dupe. Zara has a dupe. So here we go. This is Rose Gourm Rose Gourmand by by Zara. See the name Rose Gourmand basically. This is a dupe um, and it is lighter and fresher and airier than the more wintry fall version of this one of the original. It is still great and it's really inexpensive. It's like 20 something dollars. So again if you don't want to start off with the more expensive version because you're not sure about Rose as a a part of a gourmand fragrance this is a great place to start i think i paid like five or six dollars so it was on sale it was like five or six dollars for this like travel size at zara if you catch them at the right time i think normally they sell for like 10 either way if you want to give it a try and you shop at zara often enough this is a fantastic option just to start off 
let's get to the next one. Next up is one of the sweetest of the bunch of fragrances I'm going to be showing you today and it is Oscar de la Renta's Extraordinary. Now this is a lovely fruity floral fragrance that mixes together cherries, cherry blossom and a little bit of rose. The rose has a little bit of personality to the fragrance but it's really playing a back seat in my opinion to the cherry blossom and the cherry. There are some citrus elements in this as well, a little bit of musk. But for the most part what we're getting is a sweeter floral fragrance with a little bit of an edge. Not a huge edge, not a big edge but a little bit of an edge that makes this really an easy wear. This an everyday daytime fragrance for me because it is light enough texturally and sweet and feminine and pretty and really really easy to wear. This is also had an incredibly affordable fragrance. I think I picked mine up for like $16 if I'm not mistaken. It could have been less than that. Might have been more but if it's more it's like 20 So I really enjoy a lot of my Oscar de Renta fragrances. He does rose well. Uh, he does rose well. He does florals well but this one is one of my favorites just because of how much of an easy wear it is and easy reach and I love that for me. So if you're looking for a starter rose, this is probably the most starter rose of all of them if you don't like gourmands. So let's get into the next one which is more... It's still sweet, but it's less sweet. The next fragrance I'm going to be talking about is one that I've been wearing, I think, since like 2015, 2016. And it is Escada's especially delicate note. This one is basically finished. I just keep rinse, recycle, repeat with these fragrances because I really do enjoy this as a rose fragrance. Will I replace it when it's gone? Probably. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. I love her. I miss her when she's gone, but I've been wearing it for almost a decade now. It's, it's time to let it go, right? Anyway, this is in this position right after, uh, um, right right after extraordinary because it is pretty similar it is a fruity rose fragrance but this one tilts further into rose than the last one the last one tilted toward fruit more this one tilts a little heavier toward rose there are two different types of rose in this a classic rose um I think a damask rose as well as a japanese rose the fruit in here is pear i've talked about pear before and how for me pear doesn't have a ton of personalities like adding a little bit of fruity sweetness to a fragrance without changing the dynamic of the fragrance too much whereas the last one had cherry cherry is a big personality fruit and will shift how a floral fragrance smells so you put cherries with rose and it heads in the direction of cherry real hardcore you add top of that we have a little bit of ambre right here so a little bit of nuttiness and depth and the musk in here is a little bit heavier so it's a little bit more musky and um it's, it's it takes a little bit more risk takes a little bit more chances it's heading from sort of the least rosy you can get into sort of the mid-range territory but this one is really nice as an entry-level rose as well not only because it's affordable and it smells lovely but you get an introduction to rose that isn't too overwhelming and too over the top. You get a bit of sweetness, some citrus, a little bit of musk to kind of smooth everything out. So yeah, this is Escada's... <laughs> especially delicate notes which I am such a big fan of and is basically finished. I'm basically showing an empty bottle but you know what I, I mean it means that I'm probably an expert on this fragrance I've worn it so much. Next up is a classic that I enjoy wearing and have for a very long time as well and it is Ralph Lauren's Romance. Now this is an old school fragrance I want to say from the early 2000s so it's been around for a minute and sometimes when you see that there's a reason right they've done a lot of things really really well with this one so instead so I put this next to the escape for a reason. Now the level of rose, the maturity of the rose in both these fragrances is very very similar. Like it's yeah it's very similar. However, it doesn't have the fruitiness that the Escada does. This one is rose as part of a bouquet instead of balanced out by sweet fruit. And what we have here is really lovely in that it gives us a much fresher, lighter, airier rose fragrance that doesn't have the push of the sweetness of fruit. And I really love wearing this. It's a fantastic work fragrance. It smells feminine and ladylike and it smells really pretty pretty but it's also very like laid back it isn't pushing too hard it's not too overwhelming it's just a classic fragrance that smells really really good it has things like freesia and lily there's some lotus in this so fragrances that are lighter and a little bit cleaner and spa like coming together with the rose to create this beautiful bouquet and rose is just like one feather among others but the rose is distinct 
distinct enough to like present itself because it isn't a super young rose just you know a teenage rose and this is really really lovely we are now at intermission we've been talking soft rose fragrances that are pretty light airy entry-level rose fragrances and i want to show you the antithesis of that this mm. it's keali elixir 11 if you want to get into rose and you think i love keali fragrances i want an entry-level rose and there's a rose from keali i'm gonna get it don't do it i mean i can't tell you how to spend your money but this is the most 80s rose i have in my collection think Chloe Eau de Parfum and how classic are, this is on a different level. This is double the age. It is so Victorian. I'm going to say Victoria because I don't want to be disrespectful. I don't understand. I've tried to layer this every which way I can. If you have any solutions for me, how I can make this work, please let me know because it is heavy. I have a like spray of tops on top of something else that is like extra I have extra attitude and is extra strong. Anyway, this is supposed to be rose, a dirty jasmine. Not like a little jasmine. You know, like, I love jasmine. I love jasmine. I love jasmine. I can't take a heavy jasmine. The jasmine in this is as old as the rose. And then they added a heavy patchouli on top of everything else. They say there's apple in there. I don't smell nothing. I smell... <laughs> Okay, the intermission is over. Come to the portion of the video, I'm going to title Rose in there, but are we really here because of the rose, those soft rose fragrances where they've been accompanied by really interesting notes that maybe overshine the rose, but the rose is playing their position as backup. It's the rose is Robin and the other notes are Batman in these fragrances. First up mm, is Oscar de la Renta's Rose Amour. It has rose in the name. It has rose in the name. You would think it's mostly about rose, it's not. What we're here for is a tonka bean and tobacco in the base. No, if you are looking for a soft rose fragrance, the rose in here is soft. It's pretty. It is definitely there. You can notice it. You will enjoy it if you want to dabble in it. But if you are like me and you love a good tobacco but feminine girly fragrance and they barely exist, especially without the niche price tag, like in the affordable range, and this is well affordable, it's like $20, then it's really lovely to find rosa more because we get the soft rose the really ultra feminine fragrance that is really pretty there's some gardenia in here we love her but mostly we're here because of the tonka sweet lovely heavy spicy tonka with a little bit of tobacco not a lot of tobacco nothing too overwhelming i'm such a fan of this um i'm such a fan of it because i get to wear daytime tobacco without feeling like i'm choking anybody out so if you love tobacco as much as i I do and you've been looking for a feminine tobacco fragrance here we go and it's affordable you're welcome i'm sure you're tired of me talking about how much i hate aldehyde because it's terrible and i don't understand the point but there is an exception to my hatred of aldehyde and it's when maison margiela does it in fragrances like sailing day i enjoy how they treat aldehyde it doesn't just come off as soapy and laundry like but instead comes off as light airy and fresh and so here we go as part of the intermission sort of but part Part of the side quest and it is replicas lazy sunday morning which is a soft rose fragrance definitely it's a soft floral but it has these aldehydic elements in the opening and throughout the fragrance that give it this like fresh air kind of smell it really does smell like a lazy sunday morning if you lived in a cabin in nantucket or something it's really lovely this beautiful fragrance you should be wearing a white crisp shirt when you wear this like reading the new york times and doing the crossword like that is the vibe this fragrance gives and so if you want this sort of light airy new england soft rose fragrance this totally fits the bill so you're really not showing up here for rose you're really showing up here for the freshness but the rose is a wonderful accompaniment last up in our side quest of it's rose it's soft rose but are we really here for the rose and it is carolina herrera's very good girl here's the thing it's cute look at that it's a little shoe anyway this is my third favorite of the good girl line i i have them ranked but this one you're mostly here for the fruit. You're not here for the rose. You're here for a very sweet, almost tropical fruit. We have some lychee. We have some red currant. This pushes the envelope on sweetness. This is mostly a, a fruit fragrance. However, the rose in here runs toward the middle of the pack. It's not as soft. It is more of a classic rose that's in here. 
which because of the fruit being so sweet and so intense offers a bit of muskiness and balance to the fragrance so it reads almost like a soft rose fragrance which is mostly fruity it is a lovely one if you want a bit more power and personality and staying power to your fragrance but you also want very sweet fruit and you love those candy adjacent fragrances this definitely does it plus the bottle is very cute so you can't lose out where that is concerned last up and i would say most improved of the bunch in terms of my estimation and it is Fakaro's from latafa i recently hauled this as part of an Arabian fragrance haul I will link that video and I was underwhelmed with the performance of this fragrance so not with the smell the smell is lovely it is beautiful but the performance was trash it was gone in like less than two hours if that however the performance has gotten better with a little maceration and I will talk a little bit more about that but it's gotten a little bit better it's up to about four hours of wear time now and so it's worth mentioning in this video now, I've talked a little bit before about rose as part of a bouquet, rose as part of a fruity floral, and this does both. We have rose in collaboration with a lot of white florals like tuberose, the best, just the best floral note, along with some things like, mm, there's pomegranate in here, some tartar fruit, and it is a lovely fragrance. There's pear, it's beautiful. This is supposed to be a take, a dupe, an interpretation of Givenchy's Lantre D one of the sort of classic beautiful fruity floral fragrances that is out there that one does not have rose it has white florals only but this one introduces a muskier element which allows it to stand apart a bit no if you know you like white florals and you want to add in a bit of rose to add a little bit of personality and dimension to the fragrance this is a good place to go now if you do not like white florals if you're looking to float with white florals this is not where you want to start like this is a heavy start to that relationship because the white florals and the rose in here are pushing like I said the rose in here is closer to a classic rose versus a soft rose but because you have so much other things just so much is going on in this with the fruit and the other florals is that the the rose is like out competed in a lot of ways and takes not a back seat but plays its position really well um so when i talk about maceration i'm going to do a video on how to get your fragrances to last longer and just a short and simple dirty way to put it i mean subscribe so you know when i make that video you won't miss out on it one of the ways you can get your fragrances to last longer just as a preview mm, is when you get it you take it out of the box you spray it so you introduce a little bit of air to the fragrance then you put it in a dark cabinet or a cupboard somewhere a little box somewhere you forget about it for a few months you come back and it is likely no more than likely that the fragrance is going to perform significantly better you see this especially with vanillas you get it it's golden you spray it, you put it down somewhere you come back it's nearly black it's a dark color it's been macerating it has been basically aging right like a lot of these notes some of them are synthetic right but a lot of them are natural ingredients that grow and age which is why fragrances can expire right so one of the ways you can get your fragrance to do better is to give a little bit of time to mature you spray you introduce some air you put it away and you get it to work better for you the next time now this isn't up to where i need it to be quite yet because it's at about four hours from the tragic less than two it was giving before but four hours is not terrible and i'm hoping as it continues to macerate we'll get up to eight hours because that is what i've heard about this fragrance but i wanted to talk about this because it is beautiful if you know you love laundry d already you have it you enjoy it that is your vibe and you're looking for a more affordable option then this is a great option you can usually find it between like 30 and 50 dollars on the discount website so or amazon you cannot lose with this one if you know you like laundry d already or you have an opportunity to try it you test it out you know you like it this is a good option with a little bit of rose personality sprinkled in 10 fragrances later and that's everything i planned to talk about five soft rose fragrances and i could not stop i kept going and going and going and maybe i talked too much some people leave those kinds of comments in the comment section i guess they don't want me to say anything i don't know why they're here then anyway if you enjoyed this video check out my last video where i hauled some fragrances and they were lovely they were beautiful i mean i'm saying it's my last video because i expected to go up i corrupted some of the <laughs> clips <laughs> so 
Fingers crossed, mm, I can recover the entire video and post it by tomorrow. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done so already, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. I would appreciate it. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. Thank you, y'all. You are amazing. Anyway, I'm Janique. I love a soft rose moment. I love a soft rose fragrance, but like, honestly, I just love florals and I have no standards and I have all the fragrances. I'm just happy to share what I have with you. Bye, y'all. Baby, you're the one and only. Baby, you've been on my mind. You know you don't have to be lonely. You can come and take my time. Baby, I've been waiting for you. I don't mean to move too fast. I don't want to be your homie. I just want to be.